and are all included within the admissions book. Um, I didn't say yes. I didn't say yes. Okay. If there are individual parents who are saying this evening they've not received that, then that's something I will continue to look into. So, right, my, my second question is, um, if you look at the, um, well, the, the information tonight, page 141, 140 to 141, 2.5, if you skip the bullet points and go straight to the, the paragraph at the top of page 141, I won't read the whole paragraph out, um, but it just says that the changes proposed are for a two-year period, April 2014 to 16, and will be kept under review with regular reports to the school's forum. You're looking to consult on closure for Lindale. Oh, sorry. Sorry, Chair, is this the second it's report? The, uh,
next year we'll have 4 or 5 long million. So we know we're facing a different landscape. So what we want to do is go back and invest in the schools that we know we now will not be redoing. And that's where that scheme comes from, it has its origins there. In terms of bidding for the money, we've, we've, we've had that commitment, we've been looking for that for a while. Yes, when we bid internally for the money against our colleagues, we did also make a reference to the fact that should a decision be taken to close Glendale, clearly we would, we would need places at other schools. But the, the, the Ellery Park building work is not dependent on any decision we make about Glendale. The scheme at Ellery Park will be done for suitability and other reasons and flexibility reasons for whatever the decision about Glendale. So it is not dependent in any shape or form on any decision we make about Glendale. It, it actually um, begins to sort out things again that I did in the mid 1990s as a short term measure and converted the former caretaker's house to teaching accommodation. I never intended that it would last the length of time it did. The scheme deals with that issue. It moves the kitchen from the back of the school to the front, which makes sense in terms of delivery. So it deals with issues with the school needs. In all schools, um, we try and respond to parental choice. We, we, we provide extra accommodation where we can, where people are clearly wanting to go to that school. That's national policy and it's something we've tried to do. In terms of the site, the idea that we can somehow just sell the site and pocket the money is, is, is actually a bit of well, very far-fetched. If, if the decision was taken to close Lindell, there'd be a stepped process. For me, if the decision was taken to close the school, that doesn't automatically mean that it would mean there would be no education on the site. The school could convert to a free school, it could convert to academy, it could become a shared split-site school with another school the site would carry on being used much as it is now. If that didn't happen, I want to look to see what other purposes we could put to it for children. Because it's had investment, as I said, it had an investment in 1999, a substantial one. It's one of only four schools we've got in the rules, and you want to explore other possibilities. It has a youth club and a youth club on the corner of the site. So there'd be lots of other possibilities. If it came to the fact that there was no school and no other use for it, we have to then apply to the Secretary of State and we have to get his permission to dispose of the site. We have to do it under two pieces of legislation. One is Section 77 of the School Standards and Framework Act, which covers the playing fields. And the playing field is not just a pitch, it's any outside space. And we have to do it under Section 1 of the Academies Act for the rest of the site. And the Secretary of State's words are that that the presumption is against giving permission. So even if we went through all those processes and the Secretary of State did give permission to dispose of the site, it could then be disposed of, but that condition would be based on us having specific schemes where the funding would have to be reinvested in other schools. So I think it's useful to set all that out to show it is a process we've gone through. We've relocated schools to school sites when schools have closed. We have disposed of sites. But the money goes reinvested back into the school. So there's absolutely no motive on me or anybody else to address this as a capital or an asset issue. That comes at the end. And I hope by going through that, and it's a legal process, it's a, it's a national process, it shows that really the debate needs to be had about the needs of the children, not about the site. So the needs of the children keep them all later? Well, one more question here. Maybe so. Special, uh, he was the senior inspector for special education. 
But I also had a discussion with him, because if I sit there wearing the hat of doing the with Andrew, the very last thing we would want is for any member of our team to be suggesting that children should go to the school. It's the very last thing we would want. It would make an already difficult situation even worse. He went away, he replied to, to, to the letter, he replied to the, to the, to the parent, and he, I also asked him to research whether he could come across any evidence of where our staff were directing children away from the school, and the answer was he couldn't. And it's interesting, it's been really good to listen to what's been said tonight, because the references to me appear to have been mainly, if not exclusively, to staff who work for another organisation, I think that's an issue that Julia will concern in that way. The, the situation is, as I described at the very beginning, the, 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 the national framework is now embedding itself in. Andrew and I are looking to the future landscape. We can see more hurdles that we'll have to go through. Other agencies will have to be involved in saying yes or no to the current arrangement we have with funding energy places. We see a clear direction now in special, which is to move towards paying for the pupil rather than the place. So, it, 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 I'm not going to repeat all the stuff I said at the beginning, but it's, it's that national context. And also, the numbers haven't rallied. The numbers have stayed broadly stable, and that clearly makes the problem difficult. Okay. Thanks. I'm hoping that all have an answer. I am um, at an advantage, actually, of some other parents and, and members of the audience, because I know you as individuals, and I know as individuals how passionate you are about uh, children, and your responsibility towards them. Um, and, and our parents and, and members of the audience here don't know that. Uh, and they don't have the advantage that myself and some of the other councillors have. I think one of the problems we've got is the, is the language that's been used in some of the communication, uh, perhaps in the newspapers, um, and the responsibility for that. Um, also, perhaps the, uh, we've referred to the, you know, some of the perhaps careless language of, of NHS staff, perhaps. And so we have a challenge, really, as a local authority, as to how we can reverse that negative um, view that, that, that parents have. So the question is, given some of the comments that have been made to us where, where parents have a lack of confidence in the, in the process and the consultation, is there anything else that you feel that as officers we can do to try and restore confidence in the consultation process that haven't already been presented tonight? Okay, Chair, if I, if I start um, the answer to that. Um, one of the things that we're, we're deeply committed to doing uh, should the uh, decision be to proceed with the consultation is to talk with parents of each child, talk with the school, and really make sure we've got as an up-to-date assessment of the needs of each individual child at Lindale School. So that as we go forward, we are very genuinely looking at options in the knowledge of each individual child. So that when we apply what's called the FEM Improvement Test, we're doing it based on our understanding of what each individual child needs looking at how their needs can, and if they can, be met in a different setting. So it's, it's, it's making sure, amidst what you say, Councillor, a lot of the language that's been used, that we pull it back to first principle and say this is about getting it right for some exceptionally vulnerable children and parents who care deeply about their children and who need to be absolutely reassured when their child is going to school they have staff in that school who can absolutely respond to their children's needs in a, in a very caring, um, appropriate way. And that is, is the very heart of what we must do as we take this forward. Okay, Pat, and then Adam, and then me, and then Pat.
said earlier that she had, or that parents had, um, forwarded questions to you and not received replies. My question to you is, um, have you been waiting to reply to these queries on the fact that um, the parents have raised objections to the proposal for, for a consultation? I've got one more question. Thank you, Councillor. I'm glad you asked me that question. Um, I met with the staff at the school and with parents on the 19th of December. Um, it was the soonest day we could arrange uh, after I met with the governing body at Lindale School. And I brought with me a colleague who took very detailed notes of the meeting. Um, quite soon after Christmas, there were, there were very detailed questions and I did need to canvas quite a number of views to get accurate responses. And um, Mrs. Dawn Hughes, who, who was a parent who spoke at the cabinet meeting, I think Dawn is here this evening, on the 16th of January, very helpfully wrote to me saying, this is a summary of the questions we asked and here are some additional questions. And she did that under the Freedom of Information process. And what I did, I was a little delayed, but I did respond to Mrs. Hughes within the Freedom of Information timescale, which is about three weeks or so ago. Um, I've probably mistaken because I understood that those questions and responses will be circulated to the parents. And if that's not happened, I will do that tomorrow. Uh, the answer is going to be where that's going to be. I've got one other question, Another witness uh, referred to the fact that the, um, the, the, the closure of Lindale School has been brought to their attention by members of staff from another organisation. Have you had any contact yourself with the NHS about Lindale School and the staff that work there? Um, Councillor Glassman, I've been slightly chary about going very broad on a consultation at this point. Um, but I, I, I have indirectly made contact with Dr Steiger, um, but I, I will want to, if the consultation proceeds, uh, certainly meet with a group of community paediatricians uh, to elicit their views um, and meet with other health professionals who, who are involved. And I know that there are some who are actually directly working within the Lindell School. And I want to very much take soundings from them and from any other professional who's directly involved. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.